Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so in today's video, I'm just gonna give you a few ideas regarding doing some early summer photography without having to get up mega early in the morning or go out late at night. So it's about 8 a.m. roughly, probably 7.30 actually to be fair. Uh, and I've come to a nice location to really look at some nice detailed photography that I can do when we're past golden hour and sunrise. So the area that I've come to actually has quite a bit of deforestation, but actually, obviously I'm not gonna take pictures of that, but what that does mean is that there's a lot more space on the ground for the flowers uh, to pop up. So what I'm gonna to look to do today is really focus in on some of those spring, late, early summer flowers, and also the grasses as well, because the farmers here Rightly so, haven't cut the grasses down. So it does give me a nice opportunity to look for things that are very representative of this time of the year and really focus in on the details. I'm really gonna take advantage of the fact that the field hasn't been cut yet, but it is only early June. So that's uh, obviously the reason why. So we have some nice grasses here. There's also the nice ferns as well. The purple flowers in the background and these giant daisies. I'm sure they have a better name than that, but that's what I'm gonna call them. So I'm really just gonna walk up and down this footpath here, looking at the bank, looking for color combinations that work, looking for light. So the sun is in that direction over there. So the light is gonna fall on different parts of this as well. Some bits are gonna be obviously more in shadow than others. So that's what I'm looking for, getting up close with the details. The other thing I'm gonna to do today actually is because I have more time, is to take some more video um, of nature as well, because I spend a lot of time looking for photos, but really what I wanna do is just, again, do some video and actually film some of what's going on rather than just take photos of it. I've been watching a lot more nature uh, videos and programs on Netflix, et cetera, and also on YouTube as well. And I really want to start, you know, appreciating nature, not just through photography, but videoing. And of course, videoing can add a lot more depth to it because obviously, you know, you can record movement, etc. I'm really concentrating now on these grasses here with the giant daisies in them. <laughs> so I find that the key to success with this is firstly, you need to be patient. Don't expect that you're gonna get the shot that you really like the first or second time. It's really a case of trial and error. It's a little bit similar to when you're doing uh, intentional camera movement. The chance of you getting it right first time are pretty slim. So patience is key here. As I said, it is breezy, and sometimes it is a question of, firstly, a creative decision. How much do you want movement in it? You're gonna get some parts that are gonna move obviously faster than others because some of these are gonna be obviously more delicate than other parts as well. But patience is the key. And also choosing which part to actually focus on as well because again, you're not gonna get everything in focus, but that's not the point. Parts will be out of focus, but again, that's adding to the creativity of the shot. So I'm working on a composition here, and what I'm trying to do is incorporate these grasses that we have uh, as part of the shot. So again, let me just, what I'll do is I'll show you on the back of the camera. So 
you've got the grasses here blowing in the wind and then there's a layer of trees as well that you can see and then right at the top there you've got the haziness of the sun coming through so that's what I'm looking to capture now I'm going to go with um, a shutter speed here that enables me to capture the movement of the grasses at the front uh, and then obviously with everything else being stationary I like this firstly because it's really capturing the essence of the location it's capturing the slight breeze that I have and also I think it's just really nice colour combinations as well for this shot. So I'm working on a close-up of two of the giant daisies. I thought as I keep incorrectly naming them, I might as well take a shot of them. But again, having the same uh, patience game here because they are moving around in the breeze. Sometimes they're actually going in and out of the frame. I'm only concentrating on getting one of the daisies in focus. So what I'm doing, my camera is on a tripod, as you can see. ISO 400 gives me one over 320 at f6.3. I want the background blurred anyway. And what I also do with this type of shot is because I am waiting for the breeze to die down when I take it. Normally I put my camera on a two second timer when it's on the tripod. For this shot, I've actually removed the two second timer because the moment that the breeze drops, I want to touch the screen and get the shot. What I do in this scenario as well is I keep the vibration control on in the camera, despite the fact it's on the tripod. I'm doing that just to compensate for the fact that I am touching the screen without a timer delay for the shot. As you can see behind me, I've got pretty much clear blue sky this morning. There's a few wispy clouds around, but nothing major. So you notice that what I've done today is completely eliminate the sky from my shots. I'm working on a shot here, which is really making a, taking advantage of these grasses here that are catching the sunlight, and then the purple flowers as well. So again, the purpose of this really is to get some creativity going on. It is breezy, as you know, so the, uh, certainly the grasses are moving, the flowers less so. So I'm focusing in on the flowers and allowing the grasses to, to move and to be blurred as well, just to give me a, a different creative approach to this photo. Wow, it's so peaceful here. I'm going to hang around a little bit take in the surroundings, do a bit more maybe videography in terms of filming the, the nature. And then I'm gonna to move to a different location because I have something else in mind for today as well. So despite only having a 24 to 200 mil zoom lens, what I'm gonna do is go to an area that I know has a lot of black kites. So step one obviously is to look cool and trendy. I think we can tick that off as success. Go Giants. Uh, anyway. I'm at 200 millimeter, got my polarizing filter on. I set the shutter speed to one over 4,000, f6.3, because the only thing I wanna be uh, sharp or in focus is the bird. Auto ISO is giving me at the moment 1,250. So obviously I'm gonna need to denoise it a bit in uh, Lightroom but I think I've just managed to get a nice shot of one of the bigger kites as it was turning, some wispy cloud in the background as well. On the back of the camera, that looks great. It's not gonna be pin sharp because of the lens that I'm using, but on the back of the screen, that one looks really good. So I'm gonna show you that photo now. Right, time to head home. I'm really curious to see how the photo of the kite has turned out. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.